Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is the first in a series on saturation masking, which is about creating a mask or a map, if you like, of how saturated colours are in the image. The basic principle is one I came across when I was playing around. And here we've got a colour, and if you drag the colour down here, we can see that the one colour is the highest, one's in the middle, and one's the lowest. And it's the gap between the biggest and the smallest well, that gives us a measure of saturation because if we bring them together the closer they are the more it becomes a shade of grey all the way from black to white and so moving them apart we get more saturated and so on until the most saturated you're going to get is where is one at the top one at the bottom you can see how that is a very saturated orange and then the one in the middle changes that color but it's still saturated and so that's what we want to measure, the gap between the maximum value and the minimum value. So you take, find the maximum and subtract the minimum. And the way we can do that is we're first of all going to click here and hit Control J to duplicate it because we're going to turn the top layer here into the saturation mask. And we go to Filters, Apply Image, and this lets us put in equations. And don't worry, it's not difficult. It is very, very simple. Just copy this down because effectively what you're going to do here is say this is DR destination red and SR source red. And in other words, from and to. And we're going to take that and say max open brackets SR comma SG comma SB. So in other words, the maximum value of red, green and blue. So that highest one subtracting minus min of sr comma sg comma sb and if we take that and put it in just cut and paste into there we go into the red green and blue effectively because red green and blue are all going to have the same value you're going to get a gray value and what's left here when we apply click on apply image this is now going to be our saturation mask or our map and in this, where it is white, then you're going to get maximum saturation, fully saturated colours. Where it is black, there is no saturation. So effectively, in the image, it's going to be a shade of grey. And we can then use this to affect how we are going to play with those saturations. So if you look at the original one, see the colours white up here, those will appear black because there, it's a shade of grey, from black to white, and so there's no colour saturation. Whereas the brighter areas up here, that's the sky, so that's a fairly saturated blue, but it's not fully saturated. And you can look again and say down here in the grass we got a greater saturation in this. So immediately the saturation mask tells you something about how saturated your colours are. And sometimes it's obvious, but other times it's a bit more surprising. Now to turn this into a mask, the way we're going to do it here is to literally right click on it and say rasterize to mask. And we've now got a mask and it's effectively because it applies it to the image underneath, you're going to see quite a lot through. But don't worry about that for the moment. A simple use, <coughs> for example, is to use those curves. So I click on here and put on curves. But because I had the mask layer selected, it very foolishly puts the curves, but it's doing what it's told. Uh, underneath the mask. So I'm going to move that to the top and then drag the mask up onto the curves layer. And now the mask is going to control the curves. If I turn the curves upwards here, then it is going to increase the light area of that curve, uh, of the, the area under here. So this is controlling the, the, this. So effectively the curves are only applied to the saturated areas. So I can go up and down here and I can control that saturation. And one more thing I'm going to show here is if I go to the mask here and if I alt click on it, you can see my original image there. If I can control I, I invert it. And what that effectively does is that this now says we're going to can look at the areas which are not saturated. So if I go back to the curves, now I'm going to bring up the unsaturated ones. In other words, I'm going to make 
of the unsaturated areas appear more saturated, so effectively we are flattening the image. So one way, the original one, you can make the saturated areas brighter. The other ones, you can make the unsaturated areas brighter, which means that you can control the balance between one and the other. And this is actually how Vibrance works. Vibrance works on the less saturated areas and brings those up or down. So there we go. That's stage one in the series all about saturation masks. Hope that was useful and thank you very much for watching.